Okay, now we will deal with the last uh, group of primates in this lab, uh, the old world monkeys and apes. Okay, the uh, Parvarder catarini. We just dealt with the platyrrhini, the new world monkeys. The catarini and the platyrrhini make up the semiformes or the simian primates, the anthropoid primates, right? Uh, we also talked earlier about the in the infraorder tarsiform. The tar Um, monkey-like um, primates, but they're quite different from regular monkeys. And even earlier still, we dealt with the suborder Strepsirrhini, which were the uh, uh, the lemurs and the lorises and the galagos and so on of um, Madagascar, Africa, and Southeast Asia. Well, lemurs are only on Madagascar. Lorises and galagos are from Africa and Southeast Asia. Um, I'm going to deal with the Caterini, and uh, the Caterini are divided up into a few different families. Actually, they're divided into two super families. Let's talk about those first. The super family, uh, Circo, yes, this is a tongue twister, Circopithecoidea, uh, which includes the um, the Cercopithecid monkeys, the family, family Cercopithecidae, which is a large family of uh, estimated at about 160 species in 23 genera. And there's tremendous amount of variability in them. Uh, Kelt and Patton go into some of that variability. There are a number of subfamilies within the family. They include everything from crab-eating monkeys uh, to macaques to uh, large terrestrial baboons and mandrills and uh, colobus monkeys and so on. So there's a tremendous amount of variability in this, in this old world family, the Cercopithecidae. And the skull that's right in front of you here is just one representative example. Now, when you look in your um, lab manual, and also when you look in your textbook, uh, you'll see even more variability. I'll just f swing over to your textbook for a second. There in the lower left is a skull of a mandrel, which is um, a baboon-like primate, a large terrestrial baboon-like primate. And just look at that skull on that very large primate, and above it, is what looks like a territorial male primate uh, baboon as well. And baboons, for the most part, are terrestrial, although they can climb into trees as well. And uh, so not all, not all primates are arboreal. And baboons are a good example of that, as are uh, some of the apes that we'll be dealing with uh, shortly. So in the Cercopithecus, Cercopithecidae, um, uh, we have this representative uh, macaque skull here. This is Macaca fascicularis, and if you look that up, you'll see it's a, it's, um, it's a crab-eating monkey, a crab-eating macaque. So you can take a look at that and take, see it's a fairly substantial skull. Look at the teeth. You'll see that it is fairly capable of an omnivorous diet. I'm going to zoom in here. See their teeth are a lot like their cheek teeth are a lot like our teeth. That's the upper skull. There's a diastema here in the upper part of the skull between the incisors and the cheek teeth. Diastema is another name for a gap space. A few other things that you'll notice about this skull is it's got this ridge above the, um, above the orbits, above the eyes. See the eyes here? 
eye sockets and you've got this really pronounced ridge and you'll see that even more in the great apes and it uh, separates it off there's a plate here separating it from the temporal fossa here of the zygomatic arch okay uh, let's take a look at the lower jaw for a second it's the lower jaw again now you there's tremendous variability in across the family here with 160 different species so variability in ecology and body morphology and life history and body size and everything so it's um just looking at one skull isn't very diagnostic by itself but there is one character that i alluded to earlier when we talked about the platyrrhine monkeys and that is that these um, catarine monkeys have a bony tube. They have a bony tube that connects the the um, auditory bully. That's the auditory bully here, so in the inner ear. And there's a bony tube going from there to the external auditory meatus. Okay, this is the bony tube. It's maybe not as easy to see. I'll zoom in, in a second. That's the external part of it here, the external auditory meatus. And then this is the internal end. On this specimen, that tube is about a half an inch long. And the bully itself is about a half an inch in diameter. And you see the same thing on the other side. There's the tube. Now, um, I'll show you the um, the um, the skull from the uh, uh, platyrrhine monkey that we looked at in a minute for you to for comparison. So let's see if I can get that into better focus here. Let's move it slightly so you can see the tube. Here it is on the other side. You can see it a little better on this side. That would be the right side of the skull since it's upside down. So these older, old world monkeys have this tube, bony tube. An auditory bully extending laterally as a bone. And then this is the new world monkey by comparison, the one we looked at in the earlier video. And here you can see the auditory bully here doesn't have a tube on either side. See, that's that. You can hear me tapping on the bully right there. Okay, so that's the crab eating cac superfamily circopithidae. Circo uh, the other thing about this family is how extensive it is um, in distribution in the old world. Um, some of you have heard about the uh, macaques in Japan that uh, spend time in um, hot springs. Even when they're in, in the mountains of Japan, uh, they, they can spend the cold days in the winter uh, when there's snow on the ground all around them in the forest they go into these hot springs so these uh, this type of monkeys can extend into cold areas like um, they also extend into Gibraltar on the, on the Rock of Gibraltar which is a British territory at the south side of, um, of Spain and um, but if you look at the textbook, you will see that they're found, or the lab manual, that they extend all across Africa, through India, Southeast Asia, the Philippines, and onto the Japanese islands. So it's of all of the primates, with the exception of humans, they are extremely widely distributed. Okay, the last family we want to look at here, well, we'll look at the superfamily first, 
as um, the homin hominoidea. The hominoidea are also catarine, of course, they're old world. Uh, we're only going to uh, deal with one family, the hom hominidae which includes not just uh, humans, but the other great apes as well. But the hominoidea, I just scribbled some text here on the bench, includes um, two families, hominidae and the hylobatidae. And I'm sure you've seen some video of uh, some hylobatids um, swinging through the trees. That's called brachiation. When they when they swing like that, I should write that down. A type of it's a very specialized type of locomotion <laughs> through trees. Let me see if I can write it down here. B R A. Let's see how I spell it. Break. Uh, is there an H in it or not? Break. I have to double check it. Anyway, you can Google it, do my spell checking for me. Brachiation is a very specialized form. It's swinging through the trees, and those are gibbons and siamangs. They don't have a tail, and um, their um, arms and legs are highly adapted for, for swinging through the trees, and their arms are very long as a result. But uh, we don't have any skulls or any other. Uh, body parts represented here for the hylobatidae, the uh, gibbons. We just have the hominidae, family hominidae, and uh, we have the uh, chimpanzee skull here. This is Pan troglodytes, and it's a big skull, surprisingly. And you can see how it's a bigger version of what we just saw for Sarcopithesis. <laughs> for the macaque, Macaca fascicularis. So, this is the model of a chimpanzee skull. And a very well developed um, supraorbital ridge here. The uh, eye sockets are completely separated from the temporal fossa here. Here you've got that bony tube we talked about. Underneath here's the um, inner ear, the the bully, and they're extending out with the bony tube to here. Same on this side. Um, look at the teeth. Apart from having very large canines, the teeth don't look a lot different from human teeth. And nor should they. Genetically, chimpanzees are very closely related to, to humans. So, that's the skull, large skull, this is the lower jaw. Again, similar bunodont dentition for an omnivorous diet. Fairly large in sizes, but not as big as you see in, in baboons and so on. And of course, the other species with which we're all familiar is ourselves, Homo sapiens, humans. Uh, humans are also in, in the family Hominidae with Pantroglodites and uh, the orangutan and the uh, gorillas. There's a few species of gorillas. There's a few species of chimpanzees as well. And the orangutan is the biggest of them all. So that brings to a close the material that we have to share with you for um, primates. I hope this was helpful.